Hello. Hi. So it's Maggie and Kat, and oh, I hope you can hear little Harris there pitter pattering up my hall. Um, little Harris has come to join us for Tree of Life Podcast 3. So, really, we're just um, talking about what kind of week we've had. Um, this is in memory of my mum and my big sister. Um, and this is to help us trying to come to terms with our loss during COVID-19. Um, we're going to do... Last week we took the letter T from Tree of Life. Um, so the letter this week is... We're just going to follow on for that is R. And obviously uh, we named that... What stood for her name was R for Rock Chick. Yeah. Um, my mum loved um, rock bands. She liked all sorts of music. She did. But our main ones um, were Kings of Leon, The Killers, Bon Jovi, Goodbye Mr Mackenzie, and of course she grew up with, with the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Dusty Springfield, bands like that. Um, but the rock ones were Kings of Leon. She had seen them twice with me. She saw The Killers with me. She saw Bon Jovi three times. I've seen them four. <laughs> and Cats was seen with us. Once. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, That's right. one of them. And then she came to see Goodbye Mr Mackenzie with me um, when they played in Edinburgh. They hadn't played for quite a long time. And I think um, they were doing one of their albums uh, a few years ago, it was now. And she came with me um, to see that because she loved their music. Um, and she loved guitars in general. Eh? Yes. So this week, this month, um, has been quite a difficult one so far. And then um, we're only like a part of, a, like a week really of it through. Um, I think um, for me anyway, um, I've had my grand's birthday, just my gran. Um, you know, it was her birthday recently and she's up in heaven. And if there's a heaven, she's up there. Um, I want to believe there is. And then my sister, who passed away, um recently um and my papa tom they sh- both share a birthday this month um we've also got soon um a year since we our beautiful little biggie he was our one of our rapper cats um that, that passed away we've got that anniversary coming up and of course we've got mother's day um and oh i just and i wish my mum was here for mother's day um she shares that day with my Aunt Rosie as well. That, that was my mum's sister, so... I think it's very upsetting because last year for Mother's Day, you were told you didn't want to... Everybody was told not to go see their mum on Mother's Day in, because of the pandemic. Um, so that's really hard because really it is... It, it, obviously, like, this Mother's Day, she's not here, but at the same time, it's hard that you've had last Mother's Day to have that... The pandemic, pandemic, sorry, paint that over. Um, but also now this year, it's a mm. hard one too. Yeah, um, last year, last year at the beginning of March, um, we did a little family getaway, a mini trip. This is before COVID uh, restrictions were put into place. So my mum, myself, my niece and my eldest daughter, so not cat, mother, daughter, Kim, we... Um, she lived down. She lives down in England, so she met up with us down there. But we had, uh, we actually did a David Urquhart. I'd never done a David Urquhart travel before, and um, but we went to Blackpool. We actually went to a different hotel that was advertised in the brochure because I think there was bad winds that year, and the the roof of the place had been blown off, um, and we got a. A different hotel which we were so glad because when we got there um when we got told it it was actually closer um and then sort of in the city centre but bear in mind it was March most things most of the places weren't open or whatever but I mean there was shops open but so we come but we had just come back from from Blackpool and it was about ten days later I think when we went when we were told we had to start doing all this, like you know, that COVID when the restrictions yeah. really started, yeah, yeah. So, Kat's right with what she said. Um, I did my mum's food shop, which I've mentioned, my husband did his parents. We went at the same time and did our own running about. We said that before, like, um, fast as we could with a trolley oh, each, try to get oh, the food yeah. in. 
just to get in and out of that supermarket as quick as we could really and um, I had given my mum our Mother's Day um, that week I did a food shop and I'd left it at her door and I'd spoke to her at the gate so it was quite horrible on Mother's Day actually I phoned her but I mean it's a horrible thing that you know um, because every year you would be seeing her Mm -hmm. it's your Mm mum so every year you would be seeing her yeah um, so this year is going to be really weird um, and so different and very upsetting really to be honest with you I've still bought her something I've got her a card I've written her card which I mean you know I cry every day anyway but um, the fact that I've got like my sister Pauline and she shares that with my granddad's like birthday you know all sort of in the same well it is the same week um, um, you know it's quite all it's quite hard um, and I've you know, I've brought a cut birthday card for Pauline and got her something um, to place at the graves, um, you know, and something for my mum to place at the graves in their memory. But I wish they were both here. So I have to honestly say that heaven is one lucky place having all these lovely people because my gran and granddad were just gems as well. And Aunt Rosie was a character and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um... Talking about family though and things, well, um, there was a a family heirloom, I say heirloom, ha ha ha, it's not worth any money to anybody, so um, anybody from my family maybe hearing this or listening to this, um, you know, it's it's just that it was something that um, was from when I was a wee girl again, Um, it was, what, I think it's a pair of pliers and when I was cleaning out my mum's hat, um, from her house, or we'll say her final house, eh? Um, before she passed away, etc. Well, this was after she passed away, but it was her final house that she's lived in. I come across these pliers that I remember from when I was a wee girl, and I mean the very first house I ever lived in. I won't say where, um, but I lived in two houses in that area before I moved away. Um, I left home sixteen when I was sixteen or seventeen round about that age so but anyway these pliers um weren't used for pliers that I remember <laughs> they're quite strange things they're a bit rusty but I'm gonna keep them um I actually said that when I pass away I think they should come in with me <laughs> goodness gracious I think honestly we they would probably got used as a hammer uh for pulling out your teeth and things like that um but anyway it's just something that come to light that my mum had kept this for all those years and you know, definitely a memory. I found it really difficult. Um, initially, I looked through photograph albums, um, and when my mum when my mum first passed away, and of course then after with Pauline, with my big sister, and I would look at them and cry. But, but after a few weeks or whatever, I had to stop looking at them, and I've not actually opened them again for the time being. Um, I, I didn't get to that stage so you know these kind of things like I say this these little pliers that brought back a memory and I'm able to like talk about that now yeah. Um, eh? yeah sort of thing so last week Kat I'm going to speak like speak to Kat but <laughs> she didn't want to speak about her uni last week because she had a terrible week uh, she felt really stressed out and things um, you know some people's ex- some people's exams might have been postponed or stopped or maybe they're going to do their year again or whatever. But for Kat being a uni student, that's not happened. So, yeah, want... no, I'm, like I think we mentioned it in the first episode, but where you find out on the news that oh, yes. school students are, you know, their exams have been postponed or they're not sent exams at all. Oh. Um, really, for me, that hasn't been the case. That hasn't changed for me at all. Uh, I think Harris wants to say something about um, my uni experience. What do you say, Harris? What do you say? Harris, he went there. He did, he did. He stopped me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's very stressful. And um, because I just have to keep going with it. The same that everybody else has to... Not everybody, like I said, everybody, some people haven't oh, had um, the same as me. You know, they've no. For me, it's not stopped, and nothing's really been changed all that much. I still have to do coursework. I still have to do exams, uh, dissertation. Um, the only comment I can make is, um, I can't wait for it to be done, and that's it. <laughs> uh, she's been 
very stressed out about it all and um, it's not surprising really um but what happens after this i mean you know we were talking about this we were thinking about what jobs are going to be available you know it's all changed with covid19 um you know a lot of people are going after the same jobs now i mean there used to be tons of like coffee shop type jobs available you know that you could you know there was plenty of those jobs going jobs in shops like you know clothes shops etc retail things like that not now um you know and a lot of people because they've been um paid off or whatnot they're actually having to change their career after maybe 30 year or 20 year or 10 year or one year um being in that job um because it's either closed down or they just can't keep them so these people are having to look now for other jobs that's right and even mentioning the retail part of it because there's a lot of like retail companies who i would never have expected to have had to close due to the pandemic and not getting obviously enough money in and whatnot but obviously for massive massive retail companies that lot everybody knows the names of you know that's th thousands and thousands of jobs have been lost because of that and like you say people are having to you know change change up what type of career they've been doing you know for some people maybe the only experience they've had is retail maybe for other people that's not been the case um so it is really scary i covid has brought such a i don't know a mess i would say for probably for everybody's life of some sort you know it's a stress thing there whether it's money worries losing loved ones and um, just just not being able to go out and do if gym is your thing you know go exercising at a gym could have been what you did daily after your work or say you didn't or you didn't work you know, it was some, maybe something that you joined to get yourself out. If you, if you were someone that maybe already suffered from depression, that might have been your way from from releasing it and helping and whatever. And now, you you know, we've not been able to do any of these things for ages, um, even local walks. I mean, it is local what you've got to do and you've got to be careful when you're passing everybody. So, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know. It's, it is hard. It is really hard. There was a programme on this morning... Um, you know, um, it was people doing online gaming or playing little games like Animal Crossing, etc. But they were playing it with other people. And there was one that did um, off... It was like, oh, what do you call that? The driving, when you go around mountains and that. But off it's track like, driving. Aye. And that, this... Off-road. Aye. This, this person, this guy had set it up online and he was playing with other people. But that was his way <laughs> of he, him dealing with stress. Um, he said he, he was... He was suffered from depression, sorry, and stress, and that this helped him because he would be chatting with other people while he's playing the game, and we yeah, we get that. The this little thing that we're doing, this podcast, um, that we're doing, that is actually helping us from, you know, um, whether someone else listens to it or not. The fact is, we're able to talk to each other and actually say how we're feeling. Eh? Exactly. So, um, so it's like. The other thing is, what is it going to be like when COVID-19 is under control? You know, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's really hard to be like, you know, when you think of, when you, I think of things like holidays in that in the past and even just like going out shopping and going out to restaurants. There has been times throughout the pandemic when shops have opened back up and restaurants have opened back up and... Um, so that maybe that part of it isn't so necessarily going to be strange when that happens again. But you know, I, for for going on holiday, um, for those who haven't been on a holiday after the pandemic, um, traveling abroad in that again, even just traveling in the same country, um, I think it's quite a. Uh, it's it's uh, you probably have quite a different mindset about it. I don't know. Maybe it might feel normal. Maybe it won't. But it's really hard to to picture what it's going to actually feel like once like we are having when coronavirus isn't isn't around for me i haven't since blackpool which was march last year um beginning of march and um, i think it was we we came back on the fourth i haven't actually eaten out anywhere um so for me actually even like going to a gig or something like that which you know something i did all the time before go and see live bands with my husband or my mum or with my daughters or whatnot. Um, you know, 
but I'm going to find that really frightening, strange. Uh, it's frightening is the word I'm using. I mean, we already had like a big festival that was due this year. It got postponed twice. It was supposed to be last year. It got postponed for this year and it's not. it won't be happening. Um, my hubby still wants to go to it. I'm not. It was an outdoor one in Newcastle and um, I'm just not doing it. Even when, if, when things are better. And really, when I say when things are better, it would be when everybody's actually had the jab because a lot of people haven't so that is something we've not had ours yet uh, obviously cats in a very a young age a younger category um me i'm well as i mentioned in previous last week i'm 52 heading for 53 so because i don't have like any underlying health uh, conditions Will you get it? Who knows? Will you get the jab? Well, I think hopefully at some point in a while. I mean, when it first all came about, this COVID-19, they were talking about uh, getting jabs and that. I was somebody that was against them. I didn't ever say, uh, I didn't put, post it on anything or anything like that. I just, I didn't want a jab. A jab is the call, the jag. Um, yeah, people use both words, say people. Some mm. people use jab, some people use the word jag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think... Um, well, you've got to get it, haven't you? It seems very likely. Mm -hmm. Seems like you really should get it, and then that way, hopefully, you won't catch COVID nineteen. Or, you know, or if you had something, well, hopefully that would pre well prevent you getting something to pass it on. Really, um, sort of thing. So changes in our lives. What COVID nineteen has actually brought um, to me is ultra scary. Um, Sadness as well for me, as I said in previous podcasts, my mum didn't die of COVID-19, neither did Pauline, but I believe that because of it, it took my mum's life. Um, you know, something that apparently she had, um, she did have a fall, but that got better, but apparently what she had um, was underlying, and I think it, well, we don't really know, we I think that COVID brought on things that she looked to do stuff in her house because she couldn't go outside her house as such because the weather was she not wasn't, very good. Sorry, and she wasn't seeing anybody either. Mm -hmm. I mean, phone calls, yeah. Um, she wasn't that keen on face FaceTiming or anything like that. She said her battery ran down on it, but I don't think she liked holding no. the phone and doing that, even though you could put up against something, you know. Of course. Um, Talking, yeah, she was fine with that, but she was it a wasn't very sociable way. person. Mm -hmm. You know, she yeah. enjoyed like you know, if you were to go out shopping with her, and I think we mentioned this before, uh, um, on here. But if she was to see like a baby, she'd want to go up and speak to it, or she would. She just make. Or she speak to the parents she, she to, to, the parent. to let them know that their ch their wee baby was beautiful, and she just it made them She feel would good. make conversation with anybody. Uh, she uh, would. She would have made conversation. Yeah. She. With with the pandemic, without the pandemic, yeah, she was just, a, she just was. a very sociable person and uh, um liked liked chatting chat with people. Yeah, with people. she did. She really did. Mm -hmm. She always said she thought that might cheer somebody up because, for all you know, they might not have anybody else or they might not have spoken to anybody that day. And she's she was definitely one in a million. Like, um, to have that sort of attitude and how she went about her life and all that, you know. Um, she's truly missed and you know the world is not as nice a place with her not in it in this world that's for sure eh? um yeah i wish she was here uh, I, I, every day is quite a hard one without her without my sister um i just wish they were here and we we deal with each day trying to like just deal with one day at a time i don't look too far ahead um, we have like made changes in our life regarding before COVID came um, we had planned to get a camper van um, COVID, so we waited off like um, for it to sort of when we heard about COVID we thought oh my god you know we're not got, we wouldn't be able to go places with it so we haven't got to spend a lot of money and get something like that that you couldn't use exactly. it's sit outside your house eh, and what not but the strange thing is lots of people bought them up recently because we checked on the market etc and even the new ones were getting bought straight away or getting pre-ordered so they never seemed to be the one that we were after up for sale um, it seemed to be that they were all taken and that concerned me as well because we weren't supposed to be going away from 
locally where you live. So the district that you lived in, um, the, you know, you're not supposed to be really leaving there unless you really have to. So it made me think, where are these people going? So I must have been going somewhere because you wouldn't spend that amount of money and not use that I am and that's you it. know, so they had to have been gone places. But that then led me on to thinking about when the restrictions are lifted and you go to the places that camper vans, motor homes and that would go and the hook up places and campsites and you know, these people are all gonna be there and it's gonna be too busy and that worried me as well. So we decided against it, me and my husband. Um, so I've made the point as well to you, if you had been travelling for, let's just say, four or five hours, because the, le- yeah. the length of journeys you just yeah. wanted to go to, to wherever. Yeah, that's true. And you could have been travelling that far to go somewhere and find it being really busy. And then the next... The, busy, and yeah. then being like, okay, well, what other choice do we have? And the mm-hmm. next place that you maybe could have stayed overnight could have been an hour or so yeah. journey away again. Yep, it's if so that. True. So it's, it's... Well, we made the decision that we weren't getting one. It's as simple as that. We will still travel when allowed. Not Maybe not this year, but eventually. But um, just just making sure that everybody's had their jab and um, that we'll, go, we'll hopefully go when schools and everything are back running you know, back up and running and workplaces are back up running or new businesses taking up and whatever and unis, colleges, all that are up and running like fully um, before we'll go and do many trips and things like that, you know, and hope that there's not as many people around because we've got Harris now, so um, that, and he is our, he is a little bundle of fluff. Oh, very. It's um, very fluffy. He settled in well with us. I mean, Harris was my sister's dog, one of my sister's dogs. Um, he's beautiful. Um, for, from saying he's a little, uh, he's a little pom, a little pomeranian. Although we think he's a Spitz, right? It's the German Spitz. Yeah, there's kind of like a there is a resemblance to them. Um, a lot of people that have got poms or say that they've got poms. I mean, when we did a wee bit of research or whatever, even the ones that pe- other people's poms look like spits to us, you know, um, we, look, we looked it up. But anyway, he's classed as a pom. He's absolutely beautiful. He's settled in well, but he still barks at everything. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things that he barks at that obviously make sense. The dog will bark, but... You know, some we managed to cut him out a lot with barking at the planes because when he first when we first got him, he did bark at every single plane. And we obviously where we live, the plane um, direction is right above our house, so yeah. it's and we live quite close to an airport, so it's they're obviously landing or taking off at that point, so they're quite loud, and he kind of went ape yeah. at at them and he's calmed down with that to a degree but he does he sometimes he'll just be sitting there and be sitting there you think he's sleeping and the next minute he just starts barking out of nowhere yeah, and you, you, you get a you fright, get a fright. Yeah, yeah you do we get a fright any wee noises in the street if he's lying up in the bed or whatever if he sees a movement go by the the garden fence or whatever so like a van going by that you'd be able to see that movement outside of whatever he starts barking or if he hears, hears someone outside and it's a car door or a van door or anything like that, he barks his head off it and you do get a fright. But we love him um, and we look forward to taking him um, on many, many trips or long trips or you would whatever. You enjoy that a lot. I, I, think, I think I look forward to the fact that um, like a bit warmer weather as well and to see what he's like. Well, you have to be careful with him because he's got quite a wee furry coat. Um, that my husband does groom. He cuts maybe he cuts <laughs> right. he cuts his coat back, but not it's not been shaved or anything yet. But maybe in the summer, I know my sister did that, and um, she, I think she used to take both her dogs, both her poms, to get them, and they got shaved and just had part of their hair, j- just to make it better for them in the summer because they can get overly warm. Yeah. Eh? So we will see. Maybe he'll have a couple of bunches or a or a pigtail and <laughs> um, and some some of my crafty beads in his for and his wee hair. That would look kind of cool, eh? So I'm thinking of Harris, and if you've ever met him, then he's got these wee cute teeth. Yes. So the next thing we we're going to talk about was toothy pegs. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's T O O T H Y then pegs P E G S. Um, 
when COVID first started, a lot, uh, one of my fillings came out and I thought, good grief, what am I going to do? Because the dentist wasn't open. So um, when I phoned up, um, I got a voice, cons uh, I got a telephone consultation. Someone phoned me back and they told me about toothy pegs. I've never heard of them. So anyway, I went online, ordered, I ordered my first box. First time I ordered them, they were quite cheap. When I ordered the next box, other people must have cottoned on because they were practically double the price. And I actually saw Toothy Pegs um, on eBay at the beginning of the pandemic, at one little box for £100. And I thought, <gasps> are you having a laugh? Wow. Right? So anyway, I think they started off about £6, £5, £6, and then they doubled in price. And I do know that they were quite expensive. I bought quite a few boxes. But anyway, um, so it made me think... It, it does work for quite a while. You just uh, put the little bit of white stuff, you cut it to side, like cut a little bit off. You have to use these disclosure tablet type things. I think that helps the little bit of stuff to stick to your teeth. You roll it and you, you put it in boiling water, roll it in your fingers and press down hard where your filling would be. Um, now, I have to say that first time it came away, it came out and I tried it again and then it worked. But recently... Um, it came out so i can honestly say how long's the pandemic been gone it's been almost a year it's right. a year this month okay well yeah. i could honestly say to you do we need dentists so yeah we do but do we need to be getting checkups every six months no i don't believe that um it'd been a good while it was probably coming up for my checkup um at the start of that pandemic or whatever last year and of course no had a checkup yet yeah obviously I did, a filling came out, but I got no pain, so it must be like a tooth that's dead. It's not got, you know, because I didn't get any pain with it. But the fact is, um, I've not, I've still, well, the dentist was, I've still not had an appointment for the dentist to go in or anything like that. So I think everybody's the same, eh? Well, I haven't had a phone call from the dentist in a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably the worst person to say, uh, if to ask the question if six month checkups are really worth it, considering the last time I went to the dentist was oh, quite a while ago. Um, and it was on my own accord because at that time, and it wasn't for a checkup, I had problems with my jaw at the time and I couldn't really open my mouth properly, but that got resolved. But um, yeah. I, I, I don't I don't really I don't per I mean obviously oral hygiene is really important and obviously you know you want to keep your mouth clean like to toothbrush yeah which I use as well I recently <laughs> bought one but that's how my toothy peg fell out I was using it I honestly lasted for months on that as a temp filling and then when I used the electric toothbrush it was a couple of days in or whatever it blinking brought it out so Use electric toothbrush, but don't do it anywhere near your toothy peg. But I do believe, like with dentists, it can be they're quite tricky because obviously now I'm at the age where I'd have to pay for stuff to get done, um, which is sad. But um, oh. <laughs> but if I go in, a lot of time they'll turn around to me and just ask me, "Oh, we'll just do a quick X-ray," and um, so obviously this was a while ago because I haven't been to the dentist in quite a bit. Um, which probably sounds terrible. It probably sounds disgusting. But um, every time, every time I go, I've never had a filling, and nope. I've never had a filling or anything like that. Um, so normally my teeth are fine. Yeah. Um, and if I had it's any good. problems, I would call them. You know. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, they won't see you now. Cause no, they wouldn't. They haven't. But a lot of time they'll go. Oh, we'll do a quick X-ray and whatnot, and then you'll never hear back from those mm -hmm. X-ray results, even though you've paid an amount of money to get an mm -hmm. X-ray done when you didn't even ask for it yourself. So I think sometimes they like to, if you go in for a checkup, they like to add in a couple of extra things to do mm. so that it... Ah, they get the bucks off you. Yes. Uh, the dollar. Yes. Um, yes. Is what they say, eh? But, um, right, so... Um, just So basically, again, we were just slowly, for me, have just started to slowly do a little bit crafting something I've not, not really done in a long time because I um, used to make junk journals and still will be eventually but I was actually making some hanging mobiles so I used my Cricut machine um, that I hadn't used for a while and just some beads and jewellery elastic and very simple and I might add some embellishments to them but this was my way of trying to get 
back to some sort of normality. Yeah, try and bring some of your old self back. Mm -hmm. And Kat, something we have been watching together, haven't we? Um, we have been watching... Um, WandaVision. One, yeah, WandaVision, eh? Yeah, which has been brilliant. It's a fantastic show. And it's really nice as well, because um, how I've been feeling about it as well is obviously it airs every Friday. So at the end of the week, and obviously Sunday's normally the end of the week, but I mean the end of like, when it's a Friday and it's your weekend, it's quite nice to be able to have had something to look forward to, not just the fact that it's going to be the weekend, but it's been quite nice. Because yeah. in the first pandemic, when, when everything first started, obviously, um, we started Breaking Bad. Yeah. So there's been quite a couple of shows that we've gotten into yeah. because of the pandemic. So we started watching Breaking Bad and we then watched Ozark, I That's believe. Right. And then we brilliant. started watching Better Call Saul too. Yeah. Um, which still has another season to go, I believe. Um, but obviously, one division's been so. It's, it's nice to have something that you can like look forward to in a way. Yeah, oh, I understand. Um, I'm gonna well just finish this by saying that um, that I'm wishing every mother out there, up in heaven, on this earth, a very very happy Mother's Day when it comes round to you. Um, I'm probably saying it a bit early, but I'm still going to say it. Um, hope you all have a lovely day up in heaven. And Mum, I love you so much. Right, we'll be safe. So thank you for listening. Eh? Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.